Hey everybody, Benjamin Simons here, and I'm back with another quick Logic Pro X tips, helpful little video thing, hopefully for some people. Today's video, I wanna talk about some tricks you can do with automation. Um, so if you're um, working with strings, for example, uh, we'll be talking about modulation and vibrato that you wanna to automate to add realism. So what I've done is I've programmed a basic chord progression. And I want to talk about a few different scenarios uh, and ways in which you could have performed that uh, and then ways to um, easily get the kind of automation in that you would want. So scenario one is um, where you've um, hit record and you've just played in the chords flat um, with two hands. Uh, as you can see, it's a, it's a progression that would require you to play with two hands. Um, so you've not been able to um, be live programming in the modulation as you play because you haven't got three hands. Unless you're someone that does have three hands, then you don't need to watch this video. See you later. Um, and then the second scenario is um, where we've already we played it in with two hands, um, and then I've gone through and recorded in some automation for the modulation and for the vibrato, um, but. I want to repeat the phrase, so I want to keep that automation, but maybe make a few adjustments to it. Um, so it's trying to you know, establish a couple of ways that we could do that. So let's look at scenario one. Uh, we've got a flat chord progression, and there's no automation on here at all. The note velocities in these patches, uh, Albion 1, how hard you hit the note with these long articulations will make absolutely no difference to how hard that player is playing that note. So we need to use the dynamics and the vibrato to, you know, to get that kind of expression that you're looking for. The easiest way to do this is uh, super simple. So if you literally hit record, you don't need to hit any keys at all on the keyboard because you've already played it in. All we're going to do is live perform the uh, the actual automation itself. So I've got a palette gear set up here where fader one is dynamics and fader two is my vibrato. Um, so if you can see that here, you can see that's moving there and this is moving here. So um, we'll give that a go quickly. Okay, so now you'll see that if we open up the window here, nothing has changed. There isn't like a duplicate MIDI um, window that's popped up or anything. So we haven't actually programmed in any data uh, in terms of note wise. If I started playing notes, then we'd have other stuff going on. Um, but what you can see here is that it has recorded in the, um, the dynamics and the vibrato. Uh, but you probably noticed whilst I was playing, I didn't actually touch vibrato until um, sort of part way through. Um, so to be safe, um, to make sure you're triggering things properly, uh, it's probably a good idea to drag that back so that it's that modulation, that information has been triggered from the beginning of the progression. Um, what you might find is, like, and I found on big projects, is that um, if you don't have mo the data being programmed in from the start of a region, it kind of just guesses for the first part. Uh, and that's when you end up getting um, big spikes in volume and things like that that can happen because it doesn't know what it should be doing. So once you've got that in um, and you want to uh, do another take of it or you want to make any adjustments, that's fine. Um, once, you've, once you're in the window, it's the same as in the main window, A will open and close your automation and you can flick through the different automations you have actually recorded in there live, no problem. And then by hitting Command, you can see it changes to the pencil tool uh, and you can sort of go in and start saying, oh, actually I wanted it to be not quite as loud there. So bring it down and start drawing in a pattern that is what you'd like it to be instead of what you had already had. But what it does do is it gives you the, um, you know, a close version of what you wanted for you to then easily tweak without having to come in with a blank canvas and just draw it from scratch. Now, um, we want to repeat the phrase, um, so we want to loop it. So there's a few ways that we can do that. Um, we can, first of all, make sure that we don't have any overlap. 
we can tighten this up, copy and paste, and then we've got it exactly the same. Uh, and then if you want to, you can select both, can, uh, right click and join them up so that it's one can concise window but you can see you get a slight issue where it's copied the automation across where it goes from very high to very low very quickly which will sound kind of weird look that's obviously not natural for that to happen um so we can obviously fix that um you know drawing something in a bit more like that maybe so it's still coming or maybe it wants to come down on the last phrase a little bit and then start going back up again so that should hopefully sound a little bit better Cool. Uh, now the other way you could do it um, is, if I undo these a little bit, um, would be to uh, copy and paste all the MIDI. So copy all, uh, we'll copy it, and then we'll just paste it there. And what you'll see is, is it's just done a flat line uh, of automation from where the highest point was there, which we obviously don't want. Now what we can do is we can actually just copy and paste the data across. So if we just click and drag, across here to approximately the end of the phrase you can see it's all gone white and it's literally just the same as you would normally do copy and paste uh, now you can see that that's gone a bit crazy at the end there it's not a problem it's super easy to fix we'll just draw it out and it'll get rid of that no problem all right so that's one of the tricks that you can do you can also see that you'll need to do the same thing with um, you'll also need to copy across the information for the uh, vibrato no problem, that's done. We'll just smooth that out a little bit. Fine, okay, cool. So now we'll have two. I'm gonna throw in a bonus tip here. Um, if you want to, um, let's say for the second time around, you wanna chuck it up the octave higher. Um, obviously you could highlight all the MIDI and click and drag. Uh, but the other thing you can do um, is a nifty little shortcut is if you hit if you highlight all the notes you want to move, hold down Option and Shift, and then hit the up arrow, it chucks it up an octave straight away for you. So another thing you can do is, if you want to have the octave above and the octave below playing, if you, again, highlight all the MIDI, hold down Option, you'll see the magnifying glass comes up, and then when you hover over a note, you get back to the arrow. Now you click on the note, and you start dragging down, You'll see that it's got the little plus sign. There we go. So now we've got the octave, the original octave and the octave higher, so they'll play together. That's it really, I just wanted to show you a little bit of what you can do with automation, maybe a few useful tips. Maybe you didn't know you can copy and paste um, MIDI data. Uh, maybe you didn't know you can just hit record and play it in straight after. Um, but either way, I hope that's been useful and drop me a like and a comment and make sure you subscribe to the channel and I'll see you on a future video. Cheers.